So we're here today at a farm near Newark in Nottinghamshire. We're going to have a look at the barley crops. What do we need to be thinking about with regards to fungicide strategy? This crop is, is lush, it's, it's tillered very well and the key about T0 is that we need to be uh, maintaining what we've got. So green leaf area indexing barley early on is really important. We don't want disease interfering and robbing that and we don't want this crop to be dropping tillers. So if we look at this crop here, actually disease levels are pretty low. So it may actually be appropriate to wait until the T1 to tackle disease. But if you're in a higher risk situation with a variety that's quite susceptible and you're carrying disease at T0, then you may need to think about an appropriate treatment. You may need something with curative activity to take out mildew or active brown rust or you may even need to deal with rhynchosporium if you're in a higher risk part of the country. Thinking about the T1 fungicide timing in barley, how important is that as a timing for this crop? It's critical because it's the most responsive timing to fungicides in barley. We see the biggest effects on yield from there and we've got key diseases that we need to get on top of early. So what we really need to be thinking about is if we have rhynchosporium or net blotch in the crop, we need to be putting on effective treatments which will control those diseases. What do we need to be thinking about when choosing the appropriate fungicides and are there any particular challenges with certain types of chemistry? In terms of choice, prothioconazole continues to be an effective azole in barley. In terms of what that will control, it's broad spectrum, but if you think of the key diseases of rhynchosporium and net blotch, then we also need to be thinking about partnering it with, with other products such as strobilurins or SDHIs. Now we do have some challenges with a disease such as net blotch. We have resistance issues with the strobilurins and we also are seeing a sensitivity shift now with SDHI chemistry. So we need to think now about diversity of active ingredients and bringing in different types of chemistry, maximising maybe the choice of multi-site chemistry even at T1 in barley but also active ingredients such as cyprodinyl, which is a completely different mode of action to the existing chemistries and has good activity against net blotch. So they're partnering it with SDHI chemistry or prothioconazole, then that gives you a diversity and that will reduce the risk of resistance buildup in net blotch. Multi-site use in wheat is really very common and everyone's quite aware of using multi-sites as a resistance tool. Is that the same strategy in barley? Yes, I think you can draw parallels there. A key disease that we have problems with now in, in barley is ramillaria because we have big issues with resistance to the major groups of chemistry. Leaving the only effective treatment as multi-sites and uh, the most efficacious one being chlorothalonil. There are other multi-sites. There is Folpet which has some activity against ramillaria. Uh, also we shouldn't forget that multi-site chemistry such as Folpet and chlorothalonil has activity against rhynchosporium as a contact protectant. So you can use these things earlier in the programme against rhynchosporium, partner in other site-specific chemistry. And multi-site chemistry, we must remember, is very low risk for resistance. It's kind of a win-win situation. So we've talked about lots of different chemistry options for the T1 timing. Thinking about the Adama products, what would your recommended programme be? So for T1, the key diseases here are rhynchosporium and net blotch. So we need a product that's effective against both. We have an SDHI isopyrazam, which is co-formulated with cyprodinyl, and it's available as Bontema or Sabara. These two active ingredients combine to deliver broad spectrum disease control, but also there's resistance management going on in there because we've seen this shift in sensitivity uh, within the net blotch population to SDHIs, but cyprodinyl as a unique mode of action. There's no cross resistance there, so that's good resistance management strategy. If you're in a situation where you have some rhynchosporium in the crop at the T1 timing, then you may want to add in to, to that product some prothioconazole just to in, introduce a little bit more curative activity. Sounds like 
Isid Empress Soprodonil, which is Sabara and Bontima, would fit really well at T1. How about the T2 timing? Yeah, it is a flexible product, so you can use it at T2. It will give you broad spectrum control, high protective value, and also maintaining green leaf area, which is the key thing to do later on in the life cycle of the barley, in order to fill the grains and maximize yield.